Today, I thought we would talk about a really super important topic. Now, I did a video on this a few weeks ago or maybe about a month or so ago, but it's how I record my voiceovers. But today, I wanted to go a little bit more in detail of how I get that crispy audio quality that I've been getting a lot of comments on. Now, today, we're gonna to be using the Blue Yeti microphone as well as Final Cut Pro to achieve this process. And I'm also recording in QuickTime Player, which you have on like a Mac or whatever. So whatever you use for screen recording software, if you already use something, that's what you need to utilize. So we're gonna be doing everything in Final Cut Pro, and this is gonna be as seamless and as easy as possible. So if you guys really like the way that my audio sounds, here's exactly how I do it. So now that we're into Final Cut Pro, I wanna kinda of show you some of the ways that I edit my audio and kinda of get my voice really solid and how it sets off because just plugging my microphone into my computer and just recording whatever software I'm doing, it, it doesn't really get the sound that you actually hear in my final videos. Now for this current time, I'm actually recording with Qu QuickTime Player because that allows me to do the screen capture as well as get that audio too. But I'll kind of show you the differences as an audio. It's not really gonna sound that different if you record through Final Cut, if you're co recording through QuickTime or however. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of go with that. But I wanna kind of show you more of the actual way this audio works. So if you're recording a voiceover, what you wanna do is go up here to Window, go to record voiceover, and it's gonna bring up your dialog box. So I have mine set to about 10. You can kind of play around with that and see where your levels are. If you turn it all the way up, you'll notice this green bar goes higher, but through a bunch of testing I've done, it seems that 10 works the best for me. Uh, as far as input, just make sure it's the microphone you're using. I'm using the Yeti stereo microphone. Uh, system setting usually will pick that right up. I do leave the countdown to record on just for my particular projects. You may not like that, but I find that it helps a lot, so I leave that on. And then also, you can either mute your project while it's recording. So basically, if there's a lot of sound, like this video right now, there's no sound or anything. This is actually a video I created for a friend of mine a couple of days ago for her makeup artistry. But I, I eliminated all the audio from that, so I don't need to mute that. But just be weary that if you do have music or anything while you're recording your voiceover and you've got a speaker that you're listening through and not headphones, that you might hear that in the background of your microphone. So sometimes it's best to, to mute that or just put on a pair of headphones. But anyhow, once you're ready, all you got to do is hit the record button. Again, mine's will go ahead and do the countdown. And at this point, I can go ahead and start talking and record whatever I want my voiceover to be. And then what we're going to do is actually go in and edit that audio to get a different sound file so that way you can hear the difference. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and stop recording because that's, that's a pretty decent amount of audio. And then what I'm going to do is grab this audio and I'm just going to make a copy. So Command C and Command V to paste that over here. So now we have two separate audio tracks. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and edit this audio track and show you what I do. But before I do that, I want you to hear the initial audio that's gonna be recorded through. So that way you can get an idea of how they sound before and after. And at this point, I can go ahead and start talking and record whatever I want my voiceover to be. And then what we're gonna do is actually go in and edit that audio. Okay, so now that that's all out of the way, the first thing I do with my audio clips is I go ahead and apply an equalization to that. Now you can play around with these different equalizations and see what sounds the best to you, if you wanna use it, if you don't wanna use it. But I find that with my voice, the loudness equalization makes it kind of sound a little bit more richer, a little bit fuller, and a little bit bassier. Now, the next step that I'm gonna do is go into my audio settings over here. So you wanna find your effects panel over here, and then I'm just gonna go down to audio, and if you click on all, the first thing that shows up should be your channel EQ. So I'm just gonna grab that channel EQ and drop it onto that audio file. Now, I already have a preset made, and I'm gonna show you kind of how that works, but this is what the channel EQ would look like if you have not edited it whatsoever. So I'm gonna do is add my Chad Everyday Studio Audio to this, and you can kind of see what I've done. Now this kind of comes from one of my friend Marcos Rocha's videos. He has a three-part series on how to kind of dial in that audio and goes in a little bit more detail than what I'm gonna go into. So if you wanna watch his video series, you can click the card above. But basically what we're doing is pulling out some of the sounds that aren't really effective, they aren't in the human voice, and the human ear can't even hear them. So we're just kind of dipping around these different areas and that's what mine looks like. So basically what you would do is just grab one of these little sections here, you can see how it kind of highlights, and you could actually pull that, or you could go down here and type in 
these numbers. If you want to type in the numbers exactly how I've got them, just pause the video, grab those numbers and type them into your own. So that's the first thing that we do is add in the EQ. Now the next thing we do is we want to add what's called an adaptive limiter and we're just going to apply that to the audio as well. And basically what this does, this helps us to prevent certain types of peaking. So you have your out ceiling, you have your gain and different sections here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply my personal preset, which what I have here is I boost my gain up to about 4.5 decibels. And then my out ceiling, I have it negative one decibels. So when you're playing your audio, you could see over here where the audio settings are. If you go above the zero line, you're typically going to hit clipping. So if we set this out ceiling to negative one, it's going to be sure that it will not allow that audio to jump above negative one. So it definitely won't go above zero. And in theory, you won't have that clipping. Now, if you didn't record your audio very well to begin with, you may still have a few issues. So make sure when you're recording the audio, you have everything set up. That's where I put that 10 when I was doing the, the record voiceover so it didn't go up too high. And you can always add a little bit of gain and that kind of increases the volume a little bit more so you get a little bit more uh, loudness and presence into your overall video. So that's the second thing that we add. The last thing that we wanna add is a compressor. So all you gotta do is just type in compressor. It's the first one that comes up. Drag and drop that over onto your audio clip. Now, when we have compressor come up, I also have a preset for this as well. So I'll show you those numbers and kind of talk about it for a second. So here, what I do is auto gain, I have it turned off. Distortion is turned off. Everything else is pretty much set to just the basics. Now, I also don't go into any of these other buttons up here at the top. It's mostly just these six buttons here in the center and making sure that auto gain is turned off. So with my threshold, this is the only thing that I might, I might change from one video to the next, depending on the audio recording levels and the overall quality. If I feel like the, the audio is a little bit too harsh, you know, I can crank up that, uh, this section a little bit more. However, if it's not good enough, then I can just kind of tweak that. So basically what you want to do is you can move this dial back and forth depending on your audio. Now mine usually stays at this negative six decibels. Now on the ratio over here, I put this to a three dot one to one. So right here on the three, that's pretty much where I leave it. It never moves. Makeup stays right here on zero. This knee stays at 0.6. Attack is about 2.5 milliseconds and release is about 150 milliseconds. So if you don't know what those are, that's fine. Just set yours to those numbers and then you can dial them in if you need to. Again, this is something that Marcos goes a little bit more into detail with in his videos. And this is pretty much his same settings, although my threshold does change from time to time. And that's essentially all that I do. Now, sometimes depending on what I recorded with or how loud the levels are, or if I'm adding music or any other things, at that point, I might go in and crank up the volume. So let's see, let me set my speaker back down here a little bit and I'll just kind of play this through, listen to it. And for me, it's a little bit too quiet at this level that I usually release my videos. So what I'm gonna do is just increase that volume. And usually what I do is just grab the volume knob here and pull that up until I get to a level that is balanced with the music and everything else. And the best way to do this realistically, though, is to do this with headphones. If you are not recording and editing your videos while using headphones to listen to your audio, then you're not really getting in the most dialed in settings. Just because you have like really nice studio speakers and everything at home, which are great to use, but headphones are the best way because you can hear the most minute details and little sounds and clips and everything else to really get your precision editing. So now what I'm going to do is just play a little bit of the first clip, play on into the second clip, so that way you can hear the difference between the two. And at this point, I can go ahead and start talking and record whatever I want my voiceover to be. And at this point, I can go ahead and start talking and record whatever I want my voiceover to be. So relatively a pretty simple process to get really high quality audio. And as you could tell from the before clip compared to the after clip, the audio straight through the microphone into the computer is really not that great. You're going to have to do some stuff to tweak those settings to really get a sound that you like. Now you can copy and paste my settings exactly and get a pretty decent sound from there. But because your voice is going to be different than mine, you are going to have to edit 
elevated that just slightly, kind of get those sounds that you really desire. Me, I really like that sound of a little bit more of a bassy punch, so I try to add that to my particular audio. Am I editing my audio exactly for my voice the proper way? Probably not necessarily. Again, this is just a beginner video to kind of get you the basics, so that way you can increase the quality of your audio. For me, I feel like the audio is just as important, if not more important, than the video quality production. So if you've been looking to bump up your audio quality, be sure to apply the settings to today's video. I'm having a few camera issues, think my memory card's dead, so before this video ends again, be sure to create something new today.